In this video, I remade the iconic asteroid field scene from The Empire Strikes Back with modern 3D software. Back in the 1980s, when the movie was released, 3D was still in its infancy. Computers could only render basic wireframes and primitive shapes. So filmmakers had to rely on miniature models to get realistic results. Creating a whole movie with hundreds of stop motion shots could be incredibly time consuming. And because everything was shot on analog film, you sometimes had to wait days to find out you made a mistake. So here's how I improved the Star Wars scene alone, just in my bedroom in one week. Modeling the Millennium Falcon in a TIE Fighter would have probably taken a whole week on its own, so I got some models off the internet. Initially I wasn't too keen on spending money on them, but after thinking about it I changed my mind really quickly. I didn't find any nice asteroid models, so I made my own. I subdivided a cube and plugged a Voronoi texture into the displacement to create the craters. I added a noise texture to give the surface a little bit more depth and used a more detailed noise map for the finer details. After some adjustments, I had a realistic looking asteroid material. It only took like five hours. Then I duplicated it to create some variations. Don't worry, it'll look way better once it's rendered. On day two, I started a new scene in Blender and imported the Falcon as well as the asteroids I created. I used a particle system to create the asteroid belt for the background. I added a curve and used a follow path constraint to make the Falcon fly along the curve. To speed up the process, I used the original footage of the movie as a background while animating. Inside the graph editor, I applied a noise modifier to the location and rotation keyframes to make the whole animation less uniform and more random. I added a few asteroids to the foreground and gave them some rotation. The scene I want to create has nine individual shots, so there was still eight more to go. For the second shot, I adjusted the curve and changed up the asteroids a little bit. Shot three was a little more complex. One of the TIE fighters collides with an asteroid. I took some parts of the ship and emitted them using a particle system. For the explosion, I emitted some more glowing particles and applied a displace modifier to a sphere to make these sci-fi looking spikes. I created a simple lava material and applied it to the parts of the meteorite that were facing the explosion to show some damage from the impact. I was pretty happy with the result, but it'll look way better once it's rendered. In the next shot, another TIE fighter gets hit by an asteroid. I reused the particle system and extruded a vertex to create the electricity effect. With an emission material, it actually looks like a lightning. I also did a quick test render. In the fifth shot, the same TIE fighter hits another asteroid, which is exactly the same effect as before. In shot six, the Falcon flies towards a moon. That's no moon. Okay, fine, it's a larger asteroid. So I deleted all of the parts of the larger asteroid that weren't visible in camera to save some render time. In the next shot, they were getting closer to the surface, so I needed some more surface detail. If you use a single texture for large landscapes, you will always notice some tiling. But I used the Uber mapping node by Blender Guru to break up the seams. I put a link for that in the description. The surface obviously still needed some more details, so I imported some rocks from Quixel Megascans and matched the color using a color ramp node. I scattered them using a particle system. Towards the end of the scene, Han Solo flies into a crater to escape from the TIE fighters. I sculpted the crater and covered the walls in more Megascans assets. I also modeled the ravine that they fly through in the end. On day 4 I animated the Millennium Falcon and again used noise modifiers to make the animation more shaky. I applied an emitter particle system to a tiny plane to shoot green glowing cylinders. And I parented them to the cannons of the TIE fighter. Now they can shoot. Shot 8 was really simple, I just tracked the camera to the Falcon. For shot 9 I was able to copy the animation from the previous shot and then I just added a 90 degree rotation on the Y axis of the Falcon. Well, that's basically it. After rendering 2000 frames for 41 hours, I finally had a finished animation. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this.
Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to download the Asteroid Assets, you can join the Patreon.